好，二零一八年嘅第四条题目咧就系讲疾病嘅。咁我哋睇翻呢两幅图啦，就系显示翻低收入嘅国家同埋高收入嘅国家咧，佢哋头五大杀手疾病系乜嘢啦？咁啊，低收入嘅国家啦，吓呼吸道感染、辐射、中风、冠心病、艾滋病。高收入嘅國家咧，冠心病、中風、認知障礙、肺癌同埋慢性阻塞性肺病。咁啊 ，Part A 啦就問翻我哋啦，根據翻呢兩個嘅棒型圖啦，咁啊，究竟邊一類型嘅國家咧係有多一啲嘅傳染病作為頭五大嘅殺手嘅？咁呢個題目啦，擺到明就係考我哋識唔識得分辨翻。傳染病同埋非傳染病啦，咁啊傳染傳染病咧就係因為啦有一啲病原體咧入侵咗我哋身體，咁亦都啦係能夠由一個個體咧傳去另一個個體嘅。非傳染病啦，顧名思義就係唔會傳染。咁呢款病點樣產生嘅咧？遺傳因素啦、生物嘅因素啦、行為嘅因素啦，同埋環境嘅因素嘅，所以都唔難去分析翻啦。低收入嘅國家咧，五個頭號殺手當中有三個都係傳染病，所以答案咧就係低收入嘅國家啦。咁其餘嘅病痛啦，我都借呢個機會咧都。想講一講嘅，其他中風啦、肺癌啦、冠心病啦，同埋慢性阻塞性肺病咧，都係一啲生活模式病嚟嘅。咁可能大家較為陌生嘅咧，就係呢個啦，慢性阻塞性呼吸道疾病啦。咁啊，除咗長期吸煙之外啦，原來啊，長期吸入二手煙咧，都係會引致呢一個疾病嘅。或者啦，你嘅工作空間啦，有好多呢啲有機嘅塵埃嘅，例如木啦或者礦塵啦，其實都會引致呢一類型嘅肺病嘅。咁卫生署卫生防护中心呢个网页呢，我都会摆返喺留言区嘅，咁大家啦就有返呢啲参考资料呢，学多啲疾病啦。嗱，疾病呢一课呢，你话全部嘢系咪好难？又唔系真系好难，但又的确唔系每一款病呢，你都识晒㗎嘛。咁所以啦，有阵时借助呢啲机会，题目今次冇问你㗎嘛。你自己揾少少資料去望一望啦，對你哋咧一定有益處嘅。跟住啦，去到 Part B 咧，就要我哋講翻兩個原因咧，去解釋下點解低收入嘅國家佢係零舍多嘅傳染病作為頭五大殺手、哦。咁啊，今次呢條題目咧，我好中意嘅，佢就將生物科咧同埋通識科撈埋一齊嚟問你跨科目嘅問題啊！記住啊，係生物溝通識教育啊，唔係溝呢個公社科啊，佢冇咁犀利啊！咁呢個題目嘅思考邏輯呢，我哋就諗下啦，低收入嘅國家有啲咩嘅特徵呢？咁作為一個發展中嘅國家或者低度發展嘅國家啦，佢嘅經濟發展呢，相對上會係較為慢嘅。咁啊，用咩辦法呈現到出嚟呢？可能啦，用佢 GDP 啦，人均生產總值啦，都係較為低嘅。咁即係話啦，成個政府係缺錢啦，個城市係缺錢啦。咁所以啦，亦都會導致到呢，佢其他方面嘅生活質素呢，都係會弱咗嘅。例如啦，醫療質素啦。咁所以啦，佢嘅醫療系統呢，相對上可能都係弱一啲啦。咁作為醫療系統啦，對於我哋一個市民。嘅疾病究竟啦有啲咩方法去帮我哋咧？咁啊分别系三款啦，一就系预防疾病啦，例如啦就唔好俾啲疾病大爆发啦。第二啦就系介入啦，你病咗啦，我有冇办法医好你先？到第三啦，医好咗你啦，你系咪即刻能够好得翻晒，即刻能够投入翻劳动市场咧？可能都有经过一个复康嘅过程啦。嗱，当初你患咗沙士。有骨枯嘅，例如啦，你患咗肺炎之後啦，你嘅體能下降咗嘅，咁對你即刻投入翻個社會工作，可能都有一定難度嘅。低收入嘅國家、低度發展嘅國家咧，佢嗰個個人啦或者公共衞生環境都相對上較為差，係容易令到啲傳染病去散播。深挖富，佢嗰個醫療機制、佢個通報機制都係好差，即使成個疾病喺整個國家度大爆發啦。佢都當冇事發生嘅，咁當然今次呢個題目我哋唔需要答啲咁政策層面嘅嘢，我哋用返生物科嘅概念啦，就係、是、衞生環境好差都已經足夠啦。第二啦，醫療系統差，即使我知你病，我唔能夠醫得好你。例如啦，一個人患有肺炎嘅話呢佢需要有氧氣機嘅，但原來啦，你由於太窮啦，呢、這個國家佢唔夠咁多氧氣機，所以死亡率就會超高。三啦，就係、是、人民低收入呢。就冇能力去負擔高昂嘅藥費去醫治呢啲傳染病。咁例如啦，喺非洲國家呢，其實有好多人呢真係因為輻射而死嘅。你會諗屙都屙死，係啊，屙係可以屙死你㗎。個人會屙到脱水啦，流失礦物質啦，你係會休克，跟住係有機會死亡嘅。下呼吸道感染呢，其實即係近似肺炎嘅情況啦。咁呢個題目呢，我想提一個常犯錯誤嘅。就係、是、答緊 Part B 嘅時候呢，佢要我哋解釋返咧低收入嘅國家呢，點解啲人容易啲患有傳染病而死啊嘛？咁好多同學呢，就唔走去解釋點解低收入嘅國家啲人容易啲患傳染病喎。佢走咗去講呢
高收入嘅国家点解佢哋会少啲传染病？你会睇得到啦，佢根本都唔系答紧问题，人哋个问题就系针对低收入嘅国家，但系佢就走咗去讲高收入嘅国家啦。跟住去到巴斯啦，佢就讲冠心病咧系高收入嘅国家五大杀手之冠啊，就要我哋解释下啦，高收入嘅国家嘅人嘅生活习惯。同冠心病究竟有咩嘅關係呢？咁首先呢，我哋就要講下啦，冠心病有啲咩嘅高危因素，而呢啲高危因素同嗰啲高收入嘅國家嘅人民嘅生活習慣、生活模式有啲咩嘅關係啦。例如啦，成日食一啲高卡路里嘅食物啦，食肥嘅嘢啦，欠缺運動啦，因為佢哋嘅工作呢係唔需要咁多體力勞動，可能呢都係成日坐喺 office 咁嘅款嘅。咁但係呢个都仲未完，喎。咁啊因为啦，你要去讲返点解佢係五大头号杀手之冠啊嘛，係咪？咁即係你要讲埋啦，点解冠心病会导致死亡啦？咁一开始啦，我哋讲咗生活習慣啊嘛，食得太多肥腻嘢啦，有好多嘅胆固醇啦，积聚咗喺我哋个冠状动脉嗰处，就开始有啲 p r a c l e 或者所谓嘅斑块呢，就积聚咗喺个血管入面，就会令到冠状动脉呢。嘅內腔咧就會變得越嚟越窄，越嚟越窄。初期咧，你就會患有高血壓啦。咁慢慢啊，當呢個咁樣嘅斑塊越嚟越大嚿，越嚟越大嚿啦，就真係會塞住咗你個血管嘅話咧，咁自不然咧就冇血去到你嘅心臟肌肉嗰處啦。咁喺呢度咧，你見得到咧，我哋講嘅答案嘅時候係好精準嘅。我哋唔會淨係講話嗰啲膽固醇啊、啲脂肪咧積聚咗喺血管咯，佢哋係積聚咗喺冠狀動脈。冠状动脉系一条血管离开心脏，翻翻去心脏肌肉嘅血管，即系话心脏提供血俾自己嘅嗰一条血管。咁如果呢条血管塞咗嘅话啦，就会令到啦我哋嘅氧分啦、氧气啦、血啦，系唔能够去到心脏肌肉。而唔係就咁啊話去到心臟咁簡單。當我哋搭冠心病嘅時候呢，我哋啲字眼係要好精準。究竟係我哋心臟嘅邊一個位置出事？究竟啦係邊一條血管出事？邊一款嘅肌肉細胞出咗事？又嚟到一點出發啦。今次呢個題目就講疾病嘅兩類型啦，傳染病、非傳染病。傳染病嘅話啦，今次佢冇問你好多嘅，有關於病原體嘅嘢啦，傳播途徑啦，預防措施啦，例如啦，下呼吸道感染啦，輻射啦。艾滋病啦，佢嘅病原体系乜嘢咧？传播途径系乜嘢咧？有咩预防方法咧？又或者点样去医好你咧？咁去到非传染疾病啦，咁我哋就楞埋生活模式病咧，就讲下啲高危因素。而呢个高危因素咧，都摆翻喺高低收入国家咧，其实都关事嘅。咁啊，唔好误会咗咧，得高收入嘅国家咧，先会有呢个生活模式病。咁你会发现啦，低收入国家其实都有中风同埋冠心病噶嘛。佢只係爭咗個風險係乜嘢？哦，原來啦，低收入嘅國家個風險呢係講緊衞生太差，而喺高收入嘅國家，佢哋嘅風險呢係你大魚大肉，你久坐不動所造成嘅。而今次呢條題目呢，有講到冠心病，冠心病點樣導致？我哋知道咗啦，冠心病點樣導致你死咗？我哋都知道埋啦，但點樣去醫好你呢？書本呢都學咗兩個啦，一個呢就係血管形成術，所謂嘅通波仔啦，點樣呢？擺個波仔入去，波唔脹佢，令到你嘅冠狀動脈呢重新打開返。又或者啦，系冠状动脉绕道手术，又或者所谓嘅搭桥手术啦，咁样啦，搏一条新嘅血管过去，去令到啲血好似绕过咗呢个斑块，从到我哋仍然能够供应血液俾我哋嘅心脏肌肉咧。咁如果趁呢个机会啦，去提下大家啦 ，D S C 咧其实都问唔少病痛嘅嘢嘅，咁啊过往啦都有啲非传染病啊、传染病嘅题目啦，又或者啦，之前两岁都拍过嘅，胰脏咧都系一个好重要嘅器官嚟嘅。如果佢病咗嘅話啦，你會有咩情況呢 s o two o one eight question four is about the diseases. So you can see these two bar charts. It shows the top five diseases that cause death in low-income countries and high-income countries. So the diseases they are lower respiratory tract infection, diarrhea disease, coronary heart disease, AIDS, dementia, lung cancer, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So for part A, with reference to the bar charts, which countries, low-income country or high-income country, have more infectious disease as the top five disease that cause death? So this question it checks our concept that can we distinguish infectious disease from the non-infectious disease? So we can see the definition: the infectious disease can be transmitted from one person to another and is caused by the invasion of the body by pathogens. And the non-infectious disease cannot be transmitted between persons; it is caused 
caused by the genetic factor, biological factor, behavioral factor, and or environmental factors. So you can see that there are three infectious diseases in the low-income countries as the top five diseases cause death. So that's why the answer is low-income countries. And what about the other disease? We'd like to give you the classification first. For the stroke, lung cancer, coronary heart disease, coronary obstructive pulmonary disease, they are the lifestyle disease. And I think that the coronary obstructive pulmonary disease, you may not be that familiar with this disease. This disease is mainly caused by smoking or the occupational exposure to chemical themes or organic ducts such as wood or mining ducts. And apart from coronary smoking, prolonged secondhand smoking can also be cause of this disease. So this website from the Center of Health Protection, I will attach it to the comment section. For the disease topic, it's not that difficult. Somehow the question may ask you some unfamiliar cases. For example, if they ask you such disease, but no worry, they will still give you some basic information and then ask you that you know, prevent it or any treatments. So I highly recommend you guys to read some disease from the website. And for part B, suggest two reasons to account for the phenomenon stated in part A. That means low income countries, they have more infectious disease as the top five disease cause death. So this question, I like it so much because it is an inter-subject question. Biology crossover, liberal studies, but not the citizenship and social development. For this question, the thinking logic is that for the low-income countries, any features of them, most of them, they are developing or least developed countries. It means that their economic development is a bit slow, slower than the developed country. For example, their GDP is lower. So it means that the government, they don't have enough money to invest on the healthcare system. So that's why their healthcare system may be a bit poor. How can the healthcare system help the citizen in the countries? Mainly from three aspects. Prevention, how can it help the citizen get rid of the disease? For example, vaccination, the mask. And then for the intervention, you are already suffering from the disease. So does the country can give you enough support to treat you, to heal you, to make you recover. And for the last one, rehabilitation. It means that after you recover, it doesn't mean that you can join the workforce immediately. It still takes some time for you to fully recover. So can the government help you? So for the low income country, their public or personal hygiene condition may be poor, it will lead to easier spreading of the infectious disease. Or the poor healthcare system fail to treat patients at critical time. For example, for example, for the COVID-19, for example, when the people they are suffering from COVID-19, they really need the machine to pump the oxygen gas to their lungs. What if the health system cannot provide you such machine to save you? The death rate will be higher. And for the people, they have low income, so they cannot afford the expensive medical costs for treating the infectious disease. And for part B, I would like to point out the common mistake. When answering part B, some students did not explain why low income countries have more infectious disease, but they explain why the high income countries have less infectious disease. So you can see that they are not answering the question question is asking you to explain that the phenomenon state in part A. That means the low income countries have more infectious disease as the top five disease that cause death. If you talk about the high income country, it's out of the scope. And then for part C, coronary heart disease is top cause of the death in high income countries. Explain how one of the lifestyle habits in high income countries is related to the coronary heart disease. So this question, we need to recall any risk factor of the coronary heart disease and then relate it to the lifestyle in the high income countries. For example, eating too much cholesterol, saturated fats, trans fat, lack of exercise, obesity, a lot, a lot. Therefore, the lifestyle is that consumption of high calorie food, fatty food, or lack of exercise. However, that's not the end of the story. We still need to talk about why coronary heart disease cause death. So we need to recall the mechanism of the coronary heart disease. First of all, consumption of the high calorie food, fatty food, it will increase the risk of plaque formation, the deposit of the cholesterol or the fat in the coronary arteries. 
because we are talking about the coronary heart disease and then it will lead to the narrowing of the coronary arteries the lumen will be smaller or even blockage in the coronary arteries reduce or even block the blood flow to the heart muscle and then the heart muscle do not have enough nutrients food or oxygen supply and then it will need to heart attack and then the patient will die so the common mistake is that some students simply mention the deposit of the fat or cholesterol in blood vessel but did not pinpoint the coronary arteries the coronary arteries that's the blood vessel transporting the blood away from the heart back to the heart muscle therefore if the students they simply stated that the nutrient blood oxygen supply to the heart was reduced is not enough we need to specify the particular heart muscle so we need to so we need to talk about the exact location that is the coronary artery and the type of cell involved that means the heart muscle for the curriculum mapping for the disease question there are two types of disease infectious disease and the non-infectious disease so we need to think about the pathogens ways of transmission and the preventive measures for this question it didn't ask you that much lower respiratory tract infection with diarrhea and the ACE they did not ask you the pathogens ways of transmission but maybe next time it will ask you this even the treatment they will also ask you and for the non-infectious disease we link the lifestyle to the risk factor and we also link the risk factor to the high and low income countries don't think that only the high income countries they have the risk factor or consumption of the fatty food high calorie foods lack of exercise so they are the lifestyle habit but for the low income countries the people they also need to face the risk factor for example the poor hygiene condition is the risk factor for the infectious disease and for the non-infectious disease for this question it focuses on coronary heart disease it asks you about the cause it asks you about why it will need to death it did not ask you the treatment the first one is the angioplasty we insert and inflate the balloon in the coronary arteries for the second treatment is the coronary bypass surgery we make a new blood vessels to make the blood flow bypass plaque in the coronary arteries make sure that we can supply enough nutrients oxygen to the heart muscle and in the past there are different non-infectious and infectious disease question and you can take a look at the long question and also the pancreas question before